In a free calculus class, we're talking about verifying trigonometric identities. That's the lesson today is on. So just as background knowledge, let me go through these few tips that I have for you um, for how to verify an identity. First thing is we have to know what an identity stands for. And really, an identity is an equation. That means it has an equal sign, like the ones you see right down here. It has an equal sign. And it's true no matter what value you plug in for theta. No matter what angle we're talking about, if this thing is an identity, which we're verifying that it is, so I'm telling you it is in a lot of these problems. But you're, you've got to prove to me that this is true no matter what. Now that's kind of tough. Proving something not is not an identity, that's easy. If I just ask you, is this an identity? The first thing that I would do is I would go through and I would graph the two lines. I would graph this as a y1 on my graphing calculator, and I would graph this as y2 on my graphing calculator, and I'd use either the table or just to look at the lines, and I would say, you know what, if those are the exact same lines, then it's an identity. Or another thing that I could use to prove that it's not an identity, I'm just going to pick a random angle, like 37 degrees. Something that's not familiar, like a 30 degree or a 45 or a 60 or a 90 or something like that. I'm going to pick just an odd angle, 37 degrees, 61 degrees, whatever. And if I plug that in and I find the secant squared of 37 degrees, and I subtract 1, and then I divide it by the secant squared of 37 degrees, and I figure out what that little decimal is, whatever that ends up being, and I keep that off to the left. And then I go through and I find the sine squared of 37 degrees, and those aren't equal to each other. The left and right side don't give me the same decimal. Well, then that's not an identity because it didn't work for 37 degrees. In other words, to prove something isn't an identity, you only have to find one example where it doesn't work because that means it's not true for all of them. Proving something is an identity, that's a lot more work. And there's no set process, as you can see here. I type that out. There's no set process for verifying that there's an identity. So here are some guidelines. The first thing you want to do, only work with one side of the equation at a time. You don't want to manipulate both sides of the equation. What we want to really do is this. This would be tough to take and expand out and show that it's equal to secant squared minus 1 over secant squared. It's much easier to take the complicated side and take it and whittle it down by factoring and by rearranging and by getting rid of fractions and by using sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1 and things like that. It's much easier to use this and take it and whittle it down to get sine squared. So that's what we want to do. Pick the complicated side of the equation, simplify it. Look for opportunities while you're doing this to factor, to add fractions by combining like, like by finding like, uh, excuse me, by finding common denominators. Uh, look for examples places where you can square any binomials two-term equations. Look for places to create a single-term denominator. Look for opportunities to find sine, tangent and sine over cosine, or the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Figure out another thing that you want to look at the whole time. Keep in mind that whenever I'm simplifying this, I'm trying to get sine squared. So those are things that I want to leave. I want to leave a sine squared in there and work with the other stuff and get rid of it. Um, things that also work, sine and cosine pair up well. Secant and tangent pair up well because of secant squared and tangent squared and how those relate. Cosecant and cotangent pair up well. So you see those together, you want to pair those up and you kind of want to work with those. And if all else fails, I would say, like in this equation, if all else fails, turn that secant into sines and cosines. Call that 1 over cosine squared. Try something though. Try something. Don't just sit here and look at it. Because even a dead end attempt, something you start working with and you find out, you know what, that's not making things any simpler, that can lead to some insight that might help you on with it, might help you with a later attempt. So it might take you a few tries. This is something that takes a lot of work whenever you start doing it. But if you follow these kind of guidelines, you will be able to solve these things. And remember, all we're doing is we're rearranging equations. Start with the left side, make it look like the right. The next video that I have, I'll actually work through these first two examples that you see.